Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 this morning. And we'll look here at a verse, a word. I have never heard a sermon preached on this word. And I've never done it, but I, it, it keeps jumping out at me when I read the Bible. On, and I see it 38 times in the Bible it ought to be preached on. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible said these people had their understanding darkened. That's, a, that's something to think about. Understanding darkened. Being alienated. Up to date word in a King James Bible. Alien. Alienated. From the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. I want you to look in the middle of that verse and you'll see the word ignorance. That's what I want to preach on today. The word ignorance. The title of the sermon is ignorance. Now, the word ignorance, ignorant, ignorantly, as I said, is 38 times in the Bible. Webster defines the word ignorance as a lacking of knowledge or information. We put a little bit different spin on it in our generation. Um, some, some may object to me even using this as a title or word because uh, that they object to anybody using that word because it's used nowadays in a derogatory way or somebody say you're talking down like they say. You're talking down to somebody when you call them ignorant. But that is not my feeling or intention at all, nor is it God's. I'm not here to talk down to or offend anybody. Uh, but the Bible states it as a simple fact. It said the people in the days of Noah knew not. And that's exactly the same word as ignorant. Ig, ig, ignosco, without knowledge. That's what that word means. It's like, it's like agnostic. Agnostic means without, not knowing, not knowing, and um, without knowledge. It's the same as a Latin word, ignoramus. Sure it is, <laughs> same word. Uh, and uh, they, 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 make, they take that word and it says just simply not knowing. Do you know what happened to the days, people in the days of the flood? They knew not till the flood came and took them all away. So uh, I'm gonna preach it this morning and if you think a preacher should not use that word because it might offend somebody, all, all I can tell you is I, I refuse to skip over and not preach what the Bible says 38 times. And if that makes me politically correct, incorrect, so be it. Uh, there's, no, there's no way that you can stand for what this book says and fit in with the plan and, and the, the, the drift of this old world. It just ain't and it can't happen. The only way you can fit is compromise and cut it off here and cut it off here and cut it off there and we ain't gonna do it by the help of the Lord. By the help of the Lord and you ought to thank God you go to a church where we stand on what the book says. If it higher lips grand ball, the book still says it and that's just the way it is. So I'm going to use that tonight, not trying to be, or this morning, not trying to uh, be ugly or, or like, like you think, as, you're not talking down. Was the Holy Spirit talking down to somebody uh, when he inspired Paul uh, to use that word several times? Was the Holy Ghost being rude when he led Peter to say, um, uh, in 2 Peter 3, 8, I don't have you to be ignorant? Did you know? Uh, it is not a sin to be ignorant. Uh, man asked, I asked a man one time, they said, what if, do you think the two biggest sins of our generation are ignorance and apathy? And the guy said, I don't know and I don't care. Uh, just proved exactly uh, uh, what, what the man asked. Uh, so it, 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 it shouldn't be that way. It's not a sin to be ignorant. You hear me? It is not a sin to be ignorant. As a matter of fact, the Bible said in Leviticus 4.2 that sometimes a soul would sin through ignorance and God sometimes worked with it and winked at it according to the book of Acts uh, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 10 along in there somewhere. In Acts chapter 3, Peter told them, he said, Brethren, I want that through ignorance you've done this. 
So the Lord made a little, little leeway there. It is not a sin to be ignorant. It is a sin to stay ignorant. It is a sin to stay ignorant when information is available. Now that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. It is wrong to stay ignorant of something when God gives you the information. I'll give it to you five times in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 10, 1, I would not that you should be ignorant. 2 Peter 3, 8, same thing. Romans 1, 13, same thing. Romans 11, 25, same thing. And over, and, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, same thing. I would not that ye be ignorant. Uh, one, uh, some people think it's a badge of spirituality uh, to be ignorant and even brag about it. I've been in churches where people stand up and say, well, I ain't nothing but just an old ignorant country boy. Like, like bragging about that. That's nothing to brag about. Uh, and a country boy can learn the Bible and learn God and learn about the Lord. Amen. Uh, one guy stood up and said, if I, I just keep getting ignoranter and ignoranter, that, that ain't no testimony, man. Hush. Ask God to forgive you for being lazy and, and learn something. Learn something about God. Learn something about heaven. Learn something about hell. Learn the information's there, especially in our generation. The information's out there uh, if you'll get it. One old guy stood up and he said, if ignorance is bliss, I'm a blizzard. <laughs> uh, but that, that's what I'm talking about this morning. I'm talking about what the Bible says about ignorance. Now, let me say first of all this morning that men in our generation, women, boys and girls, are ignorant of the beginning of creation. Absolutely ignorant of how the world even got here to start with. Here's what you will not hear at college. Charles Darwin wanted to be a preacher and studied for the ministry and read the Bible. He wasn't saved and couldn't figure it out and he couldn't make sense out of it and his daughter died, and he got mad at God. And he got mad at God and went down some other country and studied bugs and seen all these different bugs that look similar, and he, found, he decided that since they looked similar, they all had the same ancestor. And there the theory, joke, hypotheses, religion of evolution was born. Even today... People are changing their mind about it like crazy. Did you know that many scientists today are, maybe not openly, but admitting that, all, that when, they, when they discovered DNA and all the complexities of life and the human body and the universe and everything, most of them are saying, you know what, it couldn't have just popped out of nowhere. Even Rick, Richard Dawkins, the most famous atheist in the world right now. I mean, he's the Thomas Paine of our, our generation. Even Richard Dawkins admitted now, he said there might be an intelligent uh, 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 designer, they won't say God, they might be, might be an intelligent designer that kicked it all off. A lot of scientists are saying, we believe now, this is what they teach on the History Channel, Discovery Channel, ancient aliens, that a race of aliens come and planted us here and that they've been monitoring us all these years and that's why they pop up here and yonder and you see them every now and then, and they, but they stay hid and that they're one day going to return, the Nephilim, the, the giants, the, oh, they're going to return one of these days. And they got a hold of just a tad of truth. But that alien race did not plant us here. They're ignorant of how we got here. You, and other people say, well, what does it matter? It matters a lot because how, what you believe about the world and its origin its view, determines your view of life and your philosophy and how you view the world. Your world view is determined by what you believe about how we got here and what we're doing here and where we're going. If we started out a little like a tadpole, and gradually are growing up, then hopes are in this world, man's getting better, and one day we'll be proud to be called man, and we'll all get along and live happily ever after. That's the goal. 
If you believe the Bible, it's the total opposite. We started up at the top and lost it and been going downhill ever since. That's the Bible view. They are ignorant. They are ignorant of creation. They are ignorant. In fact, the fellow said, said, once I was a tadpole uh, when I began to begin, then I was a frog with my tail tucked in, then I was a ubangi swinging from a tree, now I'm a doctor with a PhD. And that's about the size of it. Uh, but it, but it, uh, it, it, it don't, that summer summarizes in a little bit uh, what, they're, what they're doing. Let me show you a verse of scripture. Take your Bible and turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, just a second. And I want to show you a verse of scripture here in the Bible. Uh, and we'll see about this thing of ignorance this morning. Second Peter chapter number 3. And I want to show you a verse of scripture here. It's a scary verse, honestly. It's a, it's a very scary verse. This verse needs to be plastered all over Washington, D.C. and on every government building in the world. And... Uh, and in every college and university in America, this verse needs to be plastered on it. Second Peter chapter number 3, you understand we're talking about a lot of the last days and stuff like that. And look here what it said in verse 5. For this they are willingly are ignorant. Willingly are ignorant that by the word of God the heavens that were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, the world then was being overflowed, perished water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept. There's your worldview. If you're a Christian, your worldview is the worlds were framed by the word of God. But the Bible said, and notice the context, last days, that they are willingly ignorant. Now listen, if you was born, maybe not, too sharp, or you lived in a country where you didn't have access to the information, or you grew up not having a, a, a able to get education and read and write, that's one ignorance. It's a total another ignorance when the facts are presented and they're readily available and a person said, no, I don't want to look at that. I refuse to examine and look at that. And that's the generation me and you living in. The generation me and you's living in is, no, I don't want to know the history of the Bible. No, don't teach me Hebrew history. Don't show me all the prophecies that were fulfilled. Don't show me all of that. I want a party. That's our problem. Willingly ignorant because it cramps their lifestyle. And brother, we are living in a time when you start, you start preaching the Bible, people say, no, 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 no. You know why they do that? They don't want to know the truth. They are willingly ignorant, and that's a bad shape to be in. They're about that guy, uh, uh, this atheist and preacher was out one day and uh, going through the woods, and the preacher kept telling him, there's a God, there's a God. He said, I don't believe in that. That's crazy. That's a bunch of junk. There ain't no God. Come on. Uh, and he said, they was going through the woods, and all of a sudden they heard the trees moving down over here and the leaves flying like that, and something come out of them with his big foot. And uh, he came right out of Marion. And Brother Bigfoot got after him. And Bigfoot was chasing him through the woods. And they were running out there screaming like that. Ah! Ah! And Bigfoot was chasing him like that. And, uh, and the atheist said, call on God. Call on God. And the preacher said, I thought you didn't believe in God. He said, well, I didn't believe in Bigfoot till a minute ago. That's where a lot of people are. They don't believe in God. Buddy, when it gets right down to dying time, they're going to believe in him. You know, they say there ain't no atheist in foxholes. Uh, you get over there and them bombs start flying over you, buddy, and your buddies get their arms and legs blowed off. You believe in God then, son. You'll believe in God then. Not many of them ain't as tough as they try to talk. I'm telling you, they're willingly ignorant. That means dumb on purpose. That ain't right. You ought to say, I want to know the truth. Give me the truth. No matter how bad it hurts, no matter if it does cramp my lifestyle, somebody tell me the truth. And if you want it, God will give it to you. Amen. But they are willingly ignorant. I've studied some. Uh, this a lot a few years ago. And Lord in mercy, all the stuff I found, don't ever be afraid to study science if it's real, if it's real science. Science don't contradict the Bible. Only false science. The real science don't contradict the Bible. Listen. I'm telling you people, uh, just birds, just birds. Think about birds. Everybody here sees birds, knows birds, loves to see birds. Did you know that it took man 6,000 years 
copying birds to learn how to fly an airplane and going by a bird's example and the man had to make that airplane and believes the birds got here by, no, by their self and nobody made them? Do you know that birds' bones are extremely lightweight? A bird's bones are hollow. Other animals don't have that. Did you know that birds can, you know why birds can fly so long? Because oxygen comes in and God made their body so that it goes through them, continually flowing through them the whole time they're flying. That's why they can fly for 20 hours straight and stuff like that. Their feathers are uh, insulation. Their feathers keep them uh, cool in the summer and warm in the winter. They're waterproof so they can go in water. They create wing and tail surface and balance and speed. Their feathers connected to a nerve controlled by a muscle to balance, steer, and put on brakes while they are in mid-air. They have air sacs in their body and oxygen flows through them and that's why they don't get tired. Wouldn't you like to have that? They, they migrate to the North Pole and fly all the way there and can fly very all the way back when warm weather comes to the same spot. And an airplane can't do that without radar. Now man in his highest accomplishments has to have radar to show him how to get to the North Pole and back and bird did that by accident? Uh-uh, uh-uh. We are not ignorant of how this world got here. Let me tell you something, people. It is impossible that there would not could be a God. That's impossible. It's impossible. There's got to be a God. There is a God. And he's looking at you right now. They're willingly ignorant of creation. Well, let me say secondly this morning. Number two, they're ignorant of their own condition before God. They get mad at me for saying this, but they, they want to be, I reckon. I mean, we are fallen creatures. We started out big and been going down ever since. Evolution believes that we're progressing. That means getting better all the time. When you think, I mean, they get on there and say, well, isn't the world better today than it was? A, the world has made progress in transportation and communication. Transportation and communication and medication. That means we can travel better, we communicate better, and we can got more medicines to help people that are sick. Man, ain't that been a blessing. And but other than that, man has not progressed any in 6,000 years. They still hate each other. They still kill each other. They still get more perverted with time. They're still all in love with their self and put themselves first. I'm telling you that the world view of our condition before God is we're sinners. We're flawed. There's something wrong with us that cannot be fixed outside of the new birth. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while since we had a baby in the house. And, you know, you know we, had Frank, we got Frankie. Uh, is Frankie in here? He's, he's back yonder. Uh, it's, uh, he, it's been a while. We had, got him when he was seven months old. And, uh, and obviously, Kelly had never had a baby. And I said, now you watch. You watch and see. I said, he's a sinner. Oh, he is a sinner. And I'm telling you, when he first got, when he first came to the house, you know how you are with a little baby. You just think it's so precious. And it's, oh, it could never think or do anything. And for the first few months, that's what he did. Hey, Frankie, he just grinned. Let's go here, Frankie. He just reached for you. Now he will be two in December. And just a few weeks ago, well, we said, Frankie, come in. He went, mm. I said, there it is. You see that? Where'd that come from? And then one of them, she wanted to take something away from him, and he went, Ugh! Where'd that demon come from all of a sudden? I'll tell you where it come from. He's born with it. And you was too. We're flawed people. And I said, the worst thing you're going to learn about your kids is when you start realizing they got a mind of their own and a will of their own. It's scary. It gets scary when you start thinking, my goodness, I can't control everything they do and everything they say. I was one of, them, one of them guys wrote a book I was talking to about 
uh, and I don't mean to be critical of raising kids, and he said, if you can train a dog to do right all the time, you can train a kid to do right all the time. That ain't true. Dogs don't have a fallen nature. You can train a dog to be obedient constantly. You ain't going to get no kid. There's something in them, and, and you people that got little kids, you think, I'm raising the perfect kid. I'll check back with you in a few years. Something's going to come up and say, no. And you're going to say, where'd that come? It's been in them all along. They got it from you. <laughs> you got it from your parents. They got it from their parents. But you know what? The world don't believe that. Now, I'm going to say something here, and I'm not trying to be uh, uh, mean or anything, but I, I'm just going to make a point. Uh, all of us have heard about the, the crises in Los Angeles and San Francisco, of all places, wouldn't you know it? Uh, the homeless crisis. How many of y'all seen that on the news? I haven't watched all the news. I hardly ever watch the news anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm like Phil Kidd said. I'm depressed enough. I'm really not, but you know, that's just a saying. But uh, I, ch- I check it out to see if the world blew up, and that's about it. And uh, I figure if the world blows up, we'll hear about it. But uh, I, don't, I don't just sit there and glued to every issue on the news. And if you do, you're, you're going to be a warped person uh, because none of them will call sin a sin. None of them. And uh, none of them will take God's side, some closer than others, but that's another, that's another message. But anyway, uh, I saw in Los Angeles this homeless crisis, and they got Skid Row down there. I've been to Los Angeles, and I've seen them, people living in tents for blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks, and people just laying there in their own uh, feces, in their own filth and vomit with needles laying around, passed out drunk, out of their mind, and, and the, the pressure is being put on Los Angeles and, and, and San Francisco to do something about it. That's what we're going to do something. We can't just throw them all in jail. Some of them's mentally uh, handicapped. They're, they're not, they're not, they have mental problems. Some of them just full of the devil. Some of them are demon possessed. Some of them just lazy. Some of them are, are really intelligent and smart. They had some bad breaks. Maybe had bad luck, something like that. And you know what they're saying now? Here's the way the world solves that problem. And this illustrates what I'm preaching today. The world solves that problem is, let's get a trillion dollars out of y'all and build houses for all these people and help elevate them and get them off the street. Now, that sounds good. And I'm all for helping people. And if I thought that would help somebody and give them a better lifestyle, I'd say, praise God, I'll give them money out of my pocket. Let's do it. Here's the problem. Mankind is flawed. And if you do that, you go back in a few years and the windows are busted out and the carpet's ripped up and there's beer cans laying there and people passed out on the steps. I've seen it. And the problem is human nature. You you don't change men by taking them out of a poor house and putting them in a nice house. Some of the ones in the nice houses are just as wicked and more probably a lot of times up there in Hollywood. Somebody needs to go in there with the gospel of Jesus and say, look, there's hope for you. There's a better life. And they get saved and then get a job and get an education and make something of their life. That's the only hope we've got. They're willing. They say, well, these people just had bad luck. If we build them all a new house, our problem will be solved. Guarantee you it won't. Never has work nowhere else. Now, people hear me say that and they say, oh, he's mean. He, he should care about I do care. I do care. One of our great presidents said a long time ago, 100 years ago, he said, you cannot help people by doing for them what they could do and should do for themselves. Now, if somebody can't, bless God, let's raise the money and do it. If somebody can, you can't help them by handing them stuff. That's, that's, that's a condition before God is flawed. You know what a kid's main three desire, uh, impulses are and yours? Number one, self-preservation. Number two, self-gratification. Number three, self-propagation. That drives Hollywood. That drives the United Nations. That drives Morganton. That drives Charlotte. Those three drives, self-preservation. I'll stay alive at any cost. Whatever I got to do to stay alive, self 
gratification, please the flesh, make me happy, do what makes me happy, self-propagation, your sexual drive and your desire for companionship. Those three desires in a person are so deep inside you, you can't get rid of it. And the only hope is you must be born again. You must be born again. Let me say thirdly this morning. Men are ignorant of the contents of the Bible. They constantly ridicule, criticize, mock, and try to correct the Word of God. They ignorantly think, ignorantly think that the Bible is simply a collection of religious legends and fiction written by, quote, cavemen who didn't know no better. One man even said, you give enough chimpanzees, enough typewriters, and they'll come up with a King James Bible. One of them said that. They said, it's folklore. It's junk. You know why they say that? Ignorant of its content. If they ever got in it deep enough, brother, they wouldn't say that. The more I study the book, the more amazed I am at how accurate it is on the past, on the present, on the future, everything. Uh, one guy, one guy, I, I heard, heard him say this. Well, they say, he came to a, a Bible teacher, and he was a scientist, and he said, I can't accept that Bible of yours. And he said, why? He said, I tried to read it one time. What does it say? God made Adam and Eve, right, right. They had Cain and Abel, right, right. And then it said Cain went off and, and married his wife. Now see there, I can't accept the Bible. Where do you go off and marry somebody? There's the only people in the world. And the guy was a, a college a scientist. And he honestly, he didn't get three chapters before he tripped and fell off the wagon. And you know what a fellow's problem is like that? He don't want the truth. He's looking for something wrong. Oh boy, oh boy. I can shack up, I can get drunk, there ain't no God, throw it out. Ha, 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 there ain't wasn't nobody for Cain to marry. You know what that guy don't understand? Listen, by the time Cain got married people, there was hundreds of people in the world. Adam and Eve, and the next chapter said, sons and daughters. It could have, they lived to be a long time. He could have been 100 when he got married. They could have been 10,000 people in the world. He married a distant cousin. You say, well, that's incest, Adam and Eve, brother and sister. Talk about me robbing a cradle. She was one day old and he married her. Ha, ha, ha. Woo! Hit the contents of the Bible. Adam, you perv. One day old. Y'all be ashamed of yourself. Good night. I I'm, I'm, I'm need to bridle my tongue this morning. The contents of the Bible. Now I said, I preached this some long ago and I said, there is no such thing there is no such thing. Listen to me. The whole world can hear this, all I care. There's no such thing as an honest, thinking atheist. If he's honest, he ain't thinking. And if he's thinking and still says that, he ain't honest. Because you got to go back far enough to where there wasn't nothing, and then there's everything. And he knows that's not scientific. That's unscientific. The guy, the guy that said that about the aliens planting us here, the guy said, well, where'd that race come from? The ones that planted us here, where'd they come from? Well, uh, they might have come from another race. Well, where'd that race come from? You, you got to go back far enough to where there wasn't nothing. And I know I talk real country, but there is not a educated side. If Harry from last week was here, Straight from England. He would tell you there's not one at Oxford, at Cambridge, at anywhere that says there's got to be a beginning back there somewhere. Got to be. That's just common sense. Ladies and gentlemen, the contents of the Bible let us know that Cain married a relative. The prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ, every one of them come right on target. The, the, the laws about washing your hands and running water, the, about the earth being a circle and, and not a square, all that stuff's in the Bible. 
human nature. You know where we got our laws and our government and the foundation of society? You know where we got something? You, get, you, get, you work six days and off one day? Out of the Bible. We got our human relationships, husband and wife and family, from the Bible. It all comes from God's Word. And the Bible said in Acts chapter 17 and verse 23, look this one up when you get time. I ain't got time to turn to it. It said, Paul came upon these people one time and they were offering all these weird sacrifices and he said, him whom you ignorantly worship, declare I unto you. He said, you people are ignorant. Wow, what a compassionate, understanding, loving preacher. You people are ignorant. You're worshiping ignorantly. Oh, you judgmental thing, you're non-inclusive. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're condemning, you're talking down to these people. He said, ain't my fault. You don't know what you're doing. If we see in India, you know what they do in India, people? They worship cows and rats. And they believe they will not kill a cow. There's enough steak over there to feed about everybody. But they're afraid that's their grandma. Really? Mamma came back and reincarnated as that cow. Listen, brother, if we lived there, it'd be the survival of the fittest, wouldn't it? <laughs> Too bad, Granny. You're going Longhorn or Golden Corral. Uh, uh, you're 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 going to be on the, on the plate. But they they refuse. They refuse because they worship cows. And rats are taken over the country because they worship rats. You know what Paul said about that? Whom you therefore ignorantly worship. Now, the world tells us, now, you shouldn't judge them. They have just as much to write them. They're ignorant, according to the Bible. I didn't say that. God said that. Because people, people worship trees. People worship rocks. You can go, there's, there's tribes all over the, them heathen countries that worship devils. You know what the national religion in, in Haiti is? I've been there. It's voodoo. It's voodoo and Catholicism. And while I'm at it, if it's, if it's ignorant worship to worship a cow or a rat, it's just as ignorant for politicians and news people and people all over America to twiddle beads and pray to Mary. That's just as ignorant. It sure is. Whom you therefore ignorantly worship. Now that, what I just said is called inflammatory speech and polarizing people and all that. I call it Bible preaching. That's what it's always been and that's what they're trying to shut us up from doing. Brother, they're ignorant of the contents of the Bible. The Bible don't say worship Mary. Bible, Mary's a sinner just like anybody else. You don't twiddle beads. You don't talk to God through Mary. You don't talk to Jesus through Mary. Mary couldn't save a dead dog. Jesus can save. Jesus is true, and that's ignorant worship. You say, well, you're, you're hurting my family's feelings. I'm sorry. The Bible said, whom you therefore ignorantly worship. Next, number four, and I'm through. Is the future of the world. They're ignorant of the future of this old world. No matter how many laws you make to censor our freedom to preach, no matter how hard they try to force things together that don't belong together. No matter how much you try to make wrong right and right wrong, such as gay marriage, such as uh, everything's wrong, right, right's wrong. No matter how big your plans and progress you make, this world is corrupt, and according to this book, it's going to get worse and worse. There are at least, and I'm saying at least three big wars coming to this planet before God makes it over again. Revelation chapter 6, Revelation chapter 19, Revelation 6, beginning of the tribulation, Revelation 19, when the Lord comes back, battle of Armageddon, Revelation 20, at the end of the millennium, when the Lord burns up his enemy. You know what he's going to do? He's going to burn up all the green Grass. What it says in Revelation. Burn the green grass up. Burn the world up. That's God's plan for the future of man. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. The Bible said we are not ignorant. We are not ignorant. Our eyes are wide open. We can see it plain as day. Handwriting's on the wall. Hell on earth coming, y'all. 
hell on earth, famine, war, the mark of the beast. The day's coming when you've got to have a mark in your right hand or your forehead. You can't buy nothing or sell nothing. Get a job, social security, drive a car, purchase anything. That day's coming. You say, oh, Brother Danny, how do you do that? I'm not ignorant. I'm not ignorant of the future of this world. My hope ain't down here. It's up there. The Bible said, set your affection on things above, not on things below. I'll say this when I'm through this morning. Matthew 24, 39. The Bible said one day that old Noah, he preached, and he preached and preached and preached and preached for years and years and years and years and years. And Noah said, the flood's coming. The flood's coming. The flood's coming. Don't you know they laughed? Don't you know they made fun of him? Don't you know they said, Noah, you crazy old man, you kook, you've lost your mind, you old mean, hateful, intolerant, judgmental bigot. You should be ashamed of yourself. You think we're all going to drown? He said, yes, yes, you are. Oh, Noah, why, why do you think you're right and everybody else is wrong? He said, because that's what God said. God said it. God said it. I love you and I don't want you to drown. I'm not trying to be mean. Well, you're condemning us. No, I'm not. You're condemned already. You're, I just want you to get saved, get in the ark. And Noah preached and they didn't listen and you know what the Bible said they knew not they knew not son when that door was locked and that rain started falling I guarantee you them people like that atheist said I believe in him now that water started getting up to the knees up to the waist up to the chest over their head climbing the trees getting up on buildings screaming hollering screaming hollering they knew not until the flood came I'm going to tell you something this morning this is why you need to be in church and have your family in church. We are living in that same time right now. The world out there, they don't know. They know not. On purpose. On purpose. Listen, people. Sodom and Gomorrah didn't have churches on every corner that we know of. As far as we know, Lot and his family are the only righteous people in the whole city. They didn't have preaching that you could get 24 hours a day on Internet or radio. They didn't have, we're, this generation's in trouble. They're going to know not until the Lord comes and we're took all away. Don't be ignorant. Get your eyes open. That's why I fuss at you to read the Bible all the time. The, thy word, the entrance of thy word giveth light. You'll know what's going on if you'll get in that book. Get your heart right. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. No one's looking around. Take just a second here this morning. Every head bowed and every eyes closed. Maybe you're here this morning. You've never really, really been saved. People, y'all praying. Christians are praying. Maybe God spoke to you this morning. So you, there's two ways you can go. There's two roads you can go down. The right way and all the rest the wrong way. I, I, I mean, that's just all there is to it. And I want you to search your heart this morning to see if you're on the right track. Have you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ? He died for you on the cross. He's coming back again one of these days. Why don't you let him come into your heart this morning? Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, you take these few words this morning and use them for thy glory. I pray, Holy Spirit, touch every heart, every life. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, do a miracle here this morning. We'll thank you for it. Hallelujah. God, do a miracle in everybody's life here this day. I pray that families will be drawn close together. Marriages will be saved kids will get right that you give us an old fashioned Holy Ghost camp meeting like never before and I pray God right here this morning is starting somebody's heart thank you for what you do in Jesus name we pray and for his sake Amen let's sing today I need the every hour most you need the Lord this morning. Come on. Come on, young people. Come on, mamas and daddies. Amen. Amen. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior.
Amen. Lord. I come hey, man. Will you come to him today? To Will you come to him today? Join these on the altar that's been here this morning. I hey, man. Good time to get your heart right, Christian. Maybe you need to get back in there, get back on fire for God where you need to be. Good time to move right now. Hey, man. Lose their power hey, man. When thou art Say. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Hey. I come to thee. Okay, now. You got enough 